In this tutorial, we're going to cover how to get started with Tinkercad. Tinkercad is a free, easy to use app for 3D design, electronics, and coding, and it's a great way to get started with computer-aided design. To get started, you're going to create an account with Tinkercad. To do so, click on the Join Now button. From there, you can either join a class if your teacher has created one for you to join, or you can join on your own by creating a personal account. In this example, we'll create a personal account. From there, you can sign up with an email, sign in with Google, sign in with Apple, or there's some other sign in options as well to make it really easy to log in quickly and easily. Once you've created your account and have logged into the platform, you'll be brought to your My Recent Designs page. Here you'll see all of your recent designs that you've worked on in Tinkercad. Because you're new to the platform, you won't have any designs here yet. So let's get started and create one by clicking on Create New Design. Once you've created a new design, you'll be brought to a fresh work plane where you can start creating. Next, we're going to go over a few tips and tricks to getting started with using Tinkercad. So here we have the toolbar, which has some different options, which include to copy, paste, duplicate and repeat, trash, of course our undo and redo buttons, and some other tools such as hide and show, grouping, ungrouping, aligning, and mirroring. We also have some importing and exporting tools here up on the upper toolbar. On the left hand side, these are the different viewing tools to be able to view our models at different angles within the platform. So we'll take a look at those shortly. And then here on the right hand side is our shapes menu. As you can see, there's quite a few to choose from. So let's start by just dragging and dropping a regular box shape onto our work plane. So as you can see, it's sitting right on top of that work plane. And if I click on it, there are some different shape options. Every shape is gonna have some different options associated with it, but you can also control the size of an object by clicking on the various points of the object itself. So if I click on one of these white boxes, I'll see the length and width of my shape. If I click on this top white box, I'll see how tall it is and so forth. So now that we have a shape on our work plane, let's take a look at these different view tools. So the home button is going to bring you back to this home position to get a view of all of the objects on your work plane. If you have an object selected and you click this button, it's going to fit to the view of the selected shape. So that's a useful tool if you need to get up close and personal with a certain shape or group of shapes. Next, we have the zoom in and zoom out buttons. If you're using a mouse, you can use your scroll to do that. And then at the bottom here, we have orthographic views. This is a flat view of it versus the previous view, which is perspective of that particular shape. So as you can see, I'm moving around my shape here. If you're using a mouse or a trackpad, I'm simply holding down the right click button to move this way. If you prefer, you can also click and drag this square, this cube in the upper left hand corner, or just click on the different areas to get those views. So if I wanna see the back, I would click click back. If you want to see the bottom, I can click bottom. So those are your options. To select a shape, all you need to do is click on it. If you have multiple shapes on your work plane and you want to select multiple shapes, all you need to do is drag your mouse cursor with your left click on your mouse to select both. You can also select one, hold the shift key, and click on another shape to select additional shapes. Now that we have two shapes selected, let's take a look at some of the other tools we can use with that. So I'm going to click on the Align tool, and as you'll see, there are some different uh, options that come up in terms of how we want to align these. So go ahead and play around with these. As you can see, this is going to center, right align, left align. If I wanted to center them in the middle like that, I could click on that button. And yeah, there's quite a few options to play around with. So here we have the x-axis, the y-axis, and the z-axis is how far 
above or below the work plane an object is in our design. So go ahead and play around with those different align tool options. We can also mirror two shapes or multiple shapes depending on how many you have selected. So when I click that mirror button, you can see these different options here to mirror them. So if I wanted to switch their places, I click this option to accomplish that. So go ahead and play around with the different options in the upper toolbar. I'm going to go ahead and delete the cylinder shape. And I'm going to play around with the size of this box shape that I've added to the work plane. So once I've selected it, you'll see that there are some different shape options. I can adjust the radius to make the edges a little more smooth there. Let's just compare and contrast. So here we have the original box shape, and here is one with a larger radius on the edges. If I wanted to increase the steps, or rather how smooth that object is, in this case, I could increase that. You can also customize the length, width, and height of this box from the shape detail menu here. I can also just click and drag a corner or really any of those different uh, boxes here to adjust my length, width, or height, like so. And then I can also rotate the object. So as you can see here, when I have this object selected, there are some different rotate options. So go ahead and play around with those. As you can see, there are quite a few options in terms of how you are rotating it on the work plane. The final tool here when this object is selected is the raise and lower tool. So it looks like this little kind of triangle above. You'll see it's kind of above. Or if you are um, underneath the object, it will be below. But you can see it there. When it's not selected, it is black. When you are hovering over it or selecting it, it turns red. And so this allows you to raise or lower objects on your work plane. So you can see there. You can also type in values versus using the slider or the dragging tools. So if I want this to be 10 millimeters tall, I can simply click it and type in 10. Same thing with my edges here. So if I want this to be 30, and this to be 30, I can just type that in. You can do the same with the raise and lower tool. So once you've clicked and dragged it, if I want it to be 10 millimeters above the work plane, that's how I would accomplish that. So now that we've looked at the different shape specific tools and the general size and lo location tools of the different options here when our object is selected, let's take a look at our shape library. So here, as you can see, I've got my box shape. But there's also a box shape that looks like this. So this is an example of a hole. And you can turn any object into a hole. But Tinkercad has given you two here just to get you started. So basically, a hole is something where if it becomes grouped with another object, it's going to essentially create a hole in that object, as you can see here. So as you can see, I've got some overlap from this box hole shape and my solid box shape. So where that overlap is, is when I group them, that's going to essentially take that chunk out of that shape. So to do that, I'm simply going to select both shapes, both the hole and the solid object. And then I'm going to come to my toolbar and click the group button. And just like that, we have created a custom shape using a hole and a solid shape. So that's pretty cool. If you want to adjust that, you can double click it and then drag it accordingly, like so, and then click out of it. Or if you want to ungroup it entirely, all you need to do is click this ungroup button, and that's going to ungroup the two shapes. So again, let's take a look at that. So when this shape is selected, you can see that it is a solid shape, which means that if grouped with a whole shape, that it is going to create that custom cutout. If you have a whole, obviously the whole option is selected. So with that in mind, we can create 
a hole out of any shape. And that could be a custom shape or a shape from the library itself. So here I have a solid sphere shape. To make that a hole, I can just click the hole option in the shape menu there and take a custom um, shape or built-in library shape and make it into a hole, just like that. So now I'm going to ungroup this and delete the different holes there. And let's take a look at the different shape libraries. So here is the basic shape library. It's going to default to this library when you get into Tinkercad. Uh, there's some other cool shapes here in the basic library, such as the text tool. This becomes really uh, useful if you're labeling things in your design, or for example, if you're designing a building or something in Tinkercad and you want to add the name to the side of the building, this is a great tool to use. So all I did was drag and drop the text tool onto the work plane. And then here in the shape detail menu, you'll see the different options that we can do to manipulate the shape. So in the text field, I'm simply going to type in our text. So there we have our text. And then I'm also able to choose a font. So there's a couple options there. Pretty cool. And then we can adjust the height, the bevel, of the shape text and the amount of segments or basically how smooth you want that to be. And that is how you can create custom text shapes in Tinkercad. This can also be turned into a hole. I'm just going to decrease the size of that so you can see what it looks like. So if I were to make a hole out of this, Let's just go ahead and select both of these. I'm going to center align the two shapes using that align tool. So as you can see, we have a hole inside of a solid box shape. And if I group them, you'll see that the hole has been created in that shape. So creating a custom a hole out of a text shape. So kind of cool. So play around with that. A lot of things you can do there. Another unique shape in the basic shapes menu is the scribble tool. So this allows you to create custom shapes given on something you're drawing. So as you saw there when I dragged and dropped that scribble shape onto the work plane, it opened up this new window within the platform to allow me to draw my custom shape. So pretty simple. Um, it's exactly what you'd imagine. It's a scribble tool. So you can see whatever you're drawing here is showing you how that will preview on your work plane. So there's a couple of different tools here. You can erase. Obviously, we use the draw tool to draw. You can also use this tool to draw a shape. And you can delete a portion there too using that um, the erase with shape tool. So I'm going to clear using that button there, and then I'm going to just draw a simple um, smiley face there and click done. And as you can see, my very poorly drawn smiley face, <laughs> um, my scribble is created there. If I ever want to edit the scribble, I can click on the scribble shape and click edit scribble and maybe do a better smiley face than I had originally done. I don't know if that's better, but <laughs> that's how you can edit a scribble. So go ahead and explore the basic shapes in the basic shapes menu. There's a lot to choose from, and like I said, every tool, or every shape rather, is going to have different options with it. So here we have a star shape, but if I add this star shape, you'll see that it has different options. So. A lot of cool things you can do there. So now let's take a look at some of the other shape menus in Tinkercad. So if you click on this menu drop down here, you'll see that there's the basic shapes menu, text and numbers, characters, connectors, and a lot of other um, generators and things like that that you can choose from. So explore all of these. There's some different um, generators that you can use. 
This is an example of one. So here we have US states. So these are custom codes that other um, either members of Tinkercad or community members have built out. So go and check those out. Here's an example of one. So as you saw, I dragged and dropped that US states shape onto the work plane. This one has a unique um, option field where you can select a state from a list. So a lot of cool options there. So once you have um, created a model in Tinkercad, so let's say you have this house here. Now let's say that I want to add some notes to it to tell my team members exactly what I was doing on a certain portion or labeling it for a project. So I can use this note feature here. So all I need to do is click it and then identify a part of my design and click there to add a note. So this is really nice when you're working in a team or you're planning on sharing your design for someone else to take a look at. So a good way to explain why you've done something or um, bring attention to something in case you want your team members to look at it or fix it. You can also add additional work planes, which is a whole nother um, topic. You can play with rulers to measure out exactly how you want things spaced on your work plane. But those are all the basic tools you'll need to get started. You can also add people to your design. So if you click on this little icon up here, you can invite people to design with you. So you generate a link, share that link, and then you guys could simultaneously work on the design together in Tinkercad. If you want to export your design for either just viewing or you want to be able to 3D print your design, you can do that by clicking that export button and select the file type that you want there. You can also send your design you can get a picture of it by clicking on send to and then download a picture of your design as you can see there or again you can invite people to look at it and share that link with them the final thing we'll talk about is how to name and title and save your designs in Tinkercad so here you'll see that Tinkercad has given our design a unique name. So what we're going to do is simply click on that and update it to whatever the name of our design is. Tinkercad will autosave all of your work within the platform so there's no need to to save it but if you want to you can click on this recent designs option in the menu and then take a look at all the designs you've worked on recently. The final thing we'll do here is take a look at permissions. So if you're creating something in Tinkercad and you don't want people to be able to copy it and uh, manipulate it or use it in their designs, you can click on this menu option here. And then from the view, click on the little cog next to project you're working on. You can make it private or public and then update the licensing to your specific specifications and then save those changes. So that is a comprehensive overview of how to get started with Tinkercad. Be sure to check out their other built-in tutorials and check out our other tutorials here on our channel for how to get started with some other tech tools.